Welcome to Games Overboard. I'm PJ. I'm Dan. <laughs> and we have the girls with us again tonight. And we're Angie and Shanna. <laughs> sure. Are you sure? I'm Shanna. I'm Angie. She wouldn't go first. That's how you end up in a gas chamber. <laughs> Just wow. don't be in there with PJ. Yeah. So we played Subterra <laughs> yeah. this week. Reminiscent of a Nazi joke there, but she's actually talking about Subterra. <laughs> Sorry. God. Hey, it's a good time for me to break in and offer you a really cool Jimmy Steakmeyer fact. Oh, no. Just one tonight. Just one. Just one? Because they want to discuss Libertalia, so I thought it would be good to give a, a, a nice little Jimmy Stegmeyer uh, thing. Do you ever think about what kind of a sandwich would be made in your honor as your name? Oh, boy. Like, what would be the sandwich? I feel like Dan would be a meatball sub from OIP. Like, that would be his sandwich. You mean chicken parm? Yes. Kidding. Yep. It has red sauce. I never eat it, so sure. <laughs> All I have to do is call and let them know who I am, and they already exactly. have it Exactly. So there's his name. That's his sandwich. What would yours be, PJ? I don't know. Something spicy. Buffalo chicken. Buffalo chicken. That's something buffalo true. chicken. Mine's going to be an Italian BMT. Like, no question. Yeah. How about you, Angie? I don't know. I didn't prepare for this. I know. I'm putting you on the spot. Like, what is your favorite sandwich that you would offer to somebody if they had your taste buds? I don't eat sandwiches. That's the same thing with Jimmy Stegmeyer, actually, but he I... thought of one. That's really out of the box because it's not really a sandwich. Well, like an, an open, open face. face club sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he doesn't eat meat. So, okay. Oh, oh God! I hope he doesn't eat Vegemite. Sorry for anybody in Australia who likes Vegemite. I like Vegemite. Oh, that's never gross. Had it. It's I love salty it. and <laughs> all right. You won me over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's salty and delicious I love it um, Impossible it's like, burgers It's I like think. licking like a, a bouillon cube <laughs> Okay <laughs> That's what Are you thinking of your salt. favorite sandwich now Angie? Okay no. You can tell us at the end of the show So Jamie Stegmeyer Again he's not a sandwich person He doesn't really like bread He likes to eat his <laughs> food with like a, a fork and a knife Like a, That's the kind of person he is So if he were to make a sandwich That would be his Like the Jamie Stegmeyer yes. It would be Two thin pizzas, the individual uh -huh, pizzas, yeah. and in the middle would be a Beyond Burger. Super messy, not healthy that at all. That sounds pretty freaking awesome. But amazing. I would try that. Yes. I would definitely try that. I might have to go with like a bagel sandwich. <gasps> yes. Look, it's we're going to do Something out this. of the box, but delicious. Yeah. I like it. Why don't we just do pizza bagel bites? I considered getting those for lunch today, and then I just didn't eat lunch. God, I... But where's the Beyond Burger? So no, that's what we do. First of all, don't right? put a Beyond You're Burger. You just get a real burger. So that's a good idea. We could like do like Jamie Stegmeyer sliders by using big pizza bites. I'm sorry, I'm slide so far away from the table. Slide Meyer. We'll call Slide Meyer. <laughs> I love it. Oh no. I know you're not listening, Jamie, but I'm sorry. Steak for that sliders. <laughs> Steak sliders. All right. So uh, before we talk about <laughs> Subterra, we have a couple things to talk about. First off, it's someone's birthday. I have no idea who this is. Daniel's son. This you. is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Thank God. There it is. So with that, Dan and Angie played some games. I figured you guys could talk about how they get, how they went. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that sounded like a very dirty how, how, How'd those games play? <laughs> Uh, like Libertalia 2 player. So Libertalia 2 player is fast. Quick and fun. We are talking about Libertalia. <laughs> <laughs> it's also down and dirty. <laughs> if you play the stormy side. Oh, yes. Actually, if you play the stormy <laughs> side. Um, no, it, it goes really quick. That uh, Because it's the two of you and that midshipman is always going to take something off the board. Mm-hmm. Um, well, not always. Well, not always. Uh, if if you're below 20, then the person that is not directly next to him gets to take one of the treasure tokens off the board immediately. The nice. Loot they're loot tokens. Oh, the loot tokens. Sorry, loot tokens. So, um, you can screw each other over really bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, really, really bad. <laughs> we did play it with the extra um, tiles, though. Yeah, we did. 
Uh, oh, mainly for the yeah. relics, because on the stormy side, the relics really screw you. Yeah. yeah. And Those relics are one rough. of the so we as always we took turns pulling out the the tokens. Uh, one of the days, what was it? Two. We, yeah, I think there was two. Two relics. <laughs> but it, like, it, and there are only three on the thing when it's a two-player game, right? Right. So two of the three were but relics. It, but that's when you need to think about it and play something below, like twenty or below, because uh-huh. then you're next to the midshipman and somebody can take one off. Yeah. And if they're nice. We were actually pretty nice we to were, each other for yeah. the most part. Aww. I mean, we like each other. Mm. For some reason. Yeah. How does it feel to be 36 finally? Do you want to talk about it? No. Okay. It's just an offer. I was supposed to be dead long ago, so no. <laughs> don't give me that look. I, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> me neither. Okay. I haven't been 36 for two years. You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> this is my house, and I don't feel comfortable in it. Awkward. So I, in the past week, have played two of the most Euroy games ever. Where Euro-y? they're mo- Yes, a, a Euro game is like stereotypically just you picture in your head like sliding cubes on the track, and. Both of the games I've been obsessed with lately are mostly sliding cubes up and down tracks. Okay. And it's Tapestry from Stonemaier Games. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Dinosaur Island. Yeah, I, I really wanted to play Dinosaur Island yeah. tonight, but we'll do I, it next time. It's fun. Uh, yeah, they're, they're both really good games. Um, Probably would have gone quicker than this one. I don't so, think so. Dinosaur Island looks extremely complicated. It's... But at least he fiddly. already knew what he was doing. It's really freaking fiddly. Uh, uh, I'm hoping to have player aids when we actually but get I'm to the table to play roof, that one. PJ, so we can't be fiddly. I'm not on the roof. Oh mm. my god. That was a horrible joke, and if any of you understand that reference, I'm so sorry for you. I don't like being here anymore. <laughs> You've said that already. I know. It's an embarrassment. So I'm, I would like next week, maybe we do. That's We're not going to be here next week. Not next week. Well, next week, like, in terms of this podcast. Okay. How many anyway, episode? for our listeners, yeah, next ac- episode. Episode. Well, well let's, let's, let's episode. just get down to brass tacks. We're talking about Subterra Pause. today. We were talking about your birthday, actually. Before That's not we go, Terra is Latin for ground. Before we go into that, there is a really important announcement that we have. Yes, there is. We talked about it in, uh, last week also. All three of our different podcasts, we are going to be doing a giveaway because we are... Probably now at 10,000 10, Like, I haven't looked. So make sure that you are following us on Facebook. When you see the picture um, published, you can comment on that. You can send us a direct message on Facebook. You can email us at gamesoboard at gmail.com. Or you can comment on our YouTube videos. Any of those would be a yep. way for you to get into the contest, which will have an amazing game. Yeah. Arkham if Park. you email us, make sure that the subject line is contest. Otherwise, just in the comments of the YouTube video or... Um, Facebook page, just, you know, say you are throwing your name into the contest. Yep. Um, so, and you'll have to wait for that picture to be posted, and then you'll know that it is time to put in. We'll have a timestamp on there as to, like, how long you have to enter. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you'll have the game Arkham Horror. You'll have a whole bunch of grabby fun stuff from Wellhouse Exorcism and a, a set of bloody dice yep. from our D&D podcast, Danger and Dice. For our UK and people, you just swore. I know. So, uh, important too, you can either have a Wellhouse Exorcism t-shirt or a Games Overboard t-shirt. When we, whoever wins, will ask you what you want and your size, and that'll be that. That's all I got. Yep. Unpause, back to Subterra. Subterra. Is Latin for? Below ground. Okay, now we're back on track. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> uh, can I just interject here for a second? Okay. Uh, giveaway would have been a great way to get rid of aliens. No, I gave it to Dan instead. I, I know! Yeah. It's yeah. a great way to get rid of it. <laughs> I'll try it out. Maybe I can figure Happy it out. Happy birthday. Take the stuff we don't like. <laughs> if, he, if he doesn't like it, we'll give it away. Here's this again. great game, and I'll take this really shit. We can, one. like, sign our names to it. Like, look, it's signed by the podcasters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's totally cool now. PJ painstakingly glued all of this together We'll, we'll for sign you. it, and we'll leave a note that just says, not it. <laughs> and... And it can be yours, listener. Not it. I think we need to stay on brand with aliens. No, I think it needs game to... over, man. Game, game over. over. I think it needs to say no takes you backsies. <laughs> <laughs> so Subterra is designed by Tim Pinder. 
Mm. And a uh, cooperative game, one to six players. One player is annoying because you have to play minimum four players to do a one player game. Uh, that is annoying. Yeah, you can't just. Like, usually well, a one player game is like two handed. All the, all the you different know, people, not... like, have very specific jobs. So I feel like you would have to play at a minimum of four people because. Like, you need the different characters to do their amazing things, like the bodyguard, for example, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So I bought this for you for Father's, Father's Day. Day. We're finally playing it and recording it. I bought it because the review said it was very similar to Betrayal at House on the Hill, along with um, Mansions of Madness. But also In has... terms of how movement plays, definitely Betrayal House on the Hill. And it feels very pandemic-y, though, too. And I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very stressful. Especially at, near the end game. It's like, we need to we need to get out of here right now. We need to go. Uh, but, so the way the game plays, uh, if you've played Betrayal House on the Hill or something like that, you all start with just, like, one tile. And you can move off of that tile in one of four directions, because they're just square tiles. And uh, you can choose to either, like, reveal where you just, like, flip over an adjacent tile and lay it down... Or you can explore where you just immediately flip it over and then move into it, which can be very bad for you sometimes. Yep. You can also just, like, move around, heal people, remove rubble if there's rubble. You can run. You can run. So there are a whole bunch of different actions you can do. But you the base... the burglar. Yeah. Sorry, the hamburglar. Rubble, rubble. Well, you can also do Sorry. your character-specific actions. Yeah, each too. character has their own specific things. Like, my character took the top card of the stack of tiles and at any point I could look at like when I pulled the tile from the top stack I could either use the one that I had or the one I just pulled off the stack and I could choose which one I wanted to use at that time. Yeah that comes very helpful. Yes absolutely it was definitely helped. Well me as the bodyguard really saved our butts too. A Uh, lot. The bodyguard's A special action is uh, you can repel whatever creatures are lurking in the cave coming after you. Mm -hmm. And when they're at an adjacent tile, you use that action point and they don't back up. They're gone. Yeah. They retreat. They're off the board until you get another one in there somewhere. Also, it was a very good idea for you guys to stick around with me. Uh, Oh, I agree. (laughs) It was very helpful. There many times that you survived only because I of mean your I body survived hair. so many times just because <laughs> I was I said across her nose, not up it. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I heard this man. <laughs> I did, I did sir, sir, he's, he's my, my cousin. cousin. Who's that? <laughs> he's an asshole, sir. <laughs> just as I thought. How many assholes were <laughs> Yo! So I thought I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> It's his name, oh. asshole. Major asshole. <laughs> oh, now that we've had that little tangent. Um, <laughs> what was that about no editing? <laughs> well, it's all staying in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the setup of this game is very minimal, thank God, in the way of, like... Tear there, down is more right, than Right, there are up. a lot of pieces, but it's not overly complicated. Yeah. It's, you've got your tiles... When you play a card that has a hazard that's in your way, you lay down one of the hazard tokens. That's Mm it. Um, And, of course, it comes with one die. And that die will determine things like... Cave in. If you have a cave in. If you successfully do things without getting hurt. Right. Like overexerting yourself or um, attaching a rope so you can climb down. You, You all have two actions... But you can choose to exert yourself for a third action, and then you roll a die to see if it like puts any strain on your body physically. <laughs> right, like doing you can that. still do it. You just you hurt yourself while you do it. Yeah. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, I know, right? It's terrible. I hurt myself running. You just pull, just to catch up hammy? to you, I pull. I pull the hammy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I, I pulled my hammy. <laughs> What were you doing in Miami? Huh. Oh, that was horrible. So, I'm sorry. Moving on. That's a good segue into components. Yeah, so... What do we think about the art and all the pieces in it? I really like the art. 
I think the art looks pretty cool. It's I love, very moody. I love the cover, especially. The cover looks the cover great. is amazing. I could, uh, I'd buy that as a poster. And that's pretty much what you get for the rest of the tiles, is what you see on the... I like that there's just accents of, of shine, like where the water is and stuff. Like, there's yeah. just those accents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the blue hues and everything. It makes it hard to see in low light. Yeah. Like, especially as we got the cave filled out and they got farther and farther away yeah. from where I was sitting. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> I think you lost your pop filter. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we, we really could have benefited from using the um, the studio lights. Yeah, we could have pulled, turned them on for sure. Nah. What's done is done. Uh, in the way of full components, you really don't have... <laughs> I'm sorry. You really don't have a lot of setup compared to some of the other things that we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, you get you get your cards that are your um, the event, event deck, cards, pretty the much. hazard hazard, the hazard deck. Yes, uh, you have your hazard tokens. Yep, and then you have your cave car, uh, uh, tiles. Tiles, yep. Cave tiles, and, there and then of course four of those. You have these little pieces that are called the horrors. Yeah, horror. They're like they're like these little wooden bats. Yeah, I, I really like the design of those. Those are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and then you have a meeple that matches your yep, that matches, whatever color you that want. That matches your player card. Yeah, but that's probably my only complaint component-wise is those meeples they're do not, not, do not, not stand enough. up. Yeah, they're yeah. way too thin, and they just fall over mm -hmm. every time. Every time. I mean, you know, there's a tremor and suddenly they just fall over. And... Yep. It's a good way to pick who was uh, who was going to be the first player, though, because we just stood them all up and bopped the table and <laughs> three of them fell down and one was standing. And like, okay, cool. Well, that's our first player. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... And component-wise, that's my only complaint, is those things are pretty bad. Why don't you just uh, do a th 3D print? Maybe. I have to get a fuse in my printer. It's not working. Maybe if they were thicker. Exactly. That's, that's what, what he's <laughs> That's. What I like I'm about... I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I, I was noticed. on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> what I liked about the um, game versus Betrayal is that everything was very similar. Like, the explosion token that the engineer uses is the exact same size and shape as the rope token. Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to betrayal, like, they have a bajillion different kinds of tokens and little jibber oh, yeah, there's the pentagonal ones yeah. and the circular ones and, and hexagonal ones. And there's, like, ones. numbers. And, I mean, I love it because it's my favorite board game, but there's a lot to unpack with that. Oh, yeah. Whereas this, I just like that it's all very similar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that. In terms of components, that's my my win. Uh, so what about, how, how do you feel the components felt? Love it. I love the, the texturing on the tiles. The and cards are just standard cards. Yeah, I, I threw them in the sleeves. I was going to say, you sleeved those for this one. Yeah. And th that felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. The um, the tiles, again, just like a lot of games, cardboard, but it's that really thick cardboard yep. and that texture does feel really good yeah it's a really nice smooth texture on top of them very I, I very did, similar to the D, &D adventure yeah I, I did notice that they didn't slide around on our table very much we yeah. have some trouble with that with some games yeah they, they like slide. once you laid it down it was kind of locked in place yeah it was down so yeah that was like nice. expeditions those tiles will slide yeah <laughs> So yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. I know. I think it's because it's so consistent. Again, that consistency is key for this. Mm -hmm. All the different tiles are the same shape, size, the things you put on top of the same shape and size. I think that consistency makes it stay together better. Well, that and the textured. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because I wouldn't hold that these are any less textured than the Betrayal, but they're a thicker cardboard, which I think helps maintain yeah, that gravity. Yeah. A little heavier. Yeah, I feel the Betrayal ones are cheaper mm -hmm. feeling. Absolutely. Even the new version. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, they didn't... I was really hoping with the third edition of Betrayal that they'd have higher quality components and they don't. Don't send <laughs> us down that rabbit hole. I will complain. You haven't even played it yet. I refuse to because the artwork's terrible. 
just sits over there. But hey, the artwork Dan, on this is great. Do you want a game for your birthday? Well, I mean, you guys already got me two. How about a third one? No takes you backsies. <laughs> I mean, I could always... He already did that once. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is did. true. That is true. It's fool actually... me once. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> fool me twice. Uh, you better not fool me again. <laughs> Can't you can't fool me twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> on to what works. Uh, the special abilities for each character really works for me. I like games that have these kinds of things oops, for their player characters. Um, especially if you play it again in a smaller group, you can always change things up. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did talk a little bit about these, you know, the character abilities. You got to dig, dig yourself out of, you know, rubble. And other people, yeah. And other people. Um, I was a bodyguard, so everybody that was on the same tile as me was safe from just about anything. A lot of hazards. No, we didn't play the other characters, but I wonder if Dan's character was the only one that can, like, actually repel that horror. Probably. Because that makes, like, that, like, the most important, like, my opinion, like, the most important character. Yeah, playing the game without his character yeah. would be insanely difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how we would get through that. Uh, I don't know. That leads to, like, what works for me is, one, the feeling of tension. Like, the oh, game yeah. is tense. You only have three bits of health, and they disappear very fast. Except for the bodyguard. The bodyguard say, has more, yeah. You guys did. Most, I had five. Most of the Spelunkers have three bits of health. You used the word! You used the word! <sighs> the game uses the word cavers. Yeah, it's not... No, no it's Spelunker. Caving is, is a term, too, though. Like, but that's a perfectly spelunking. viable yeah. term. Spelunking. Anyways. Agree to disagree? It's more fun to you say. You know what? I'm going to say cavers now for the rest of the time. Oh, you just so, most off. cavers have three slots of health, Spelunkers. and they go away very, very quickly. Yeah, especially if you exert yourself and you fail. Yeah. But that goes to my second favorite thing that works is exertion. And where, when you fail? Yes. No. Well, yes, actually. Because, okay, let's say I spent two actions to move somewhere and then remove rubble from your from Dan's space. Then I want to exert myself to move into another place. Uh, so I I say I'm going to exert. I get that. Like, doesn't matter what I roll on my die, I get that third action. I just roll the die to see if I take damage or not. And I like, I really like that. Where most games, they probably would have had it designed where, like, you roll to see if you can do that third right. move or not. Right. But this is like, no, you get to you get do the, the thing. You're just going to hurt yourself. Yeah, it's like, do you hurt yourself or not? Which I think is just a brilliant idea. I love that. Yeah, and with the th with most of the characters only having three health, you really have to decide: should I, should I, should I chance it? Yeah. Should I go for it and put myself <laughs> unconscious? <laughs> and that's the thing: your characters don't die. You just you lose consciousness until someone can revive you. Mm -hmm. So what doesn't work? Well, first off, is there anything else that does work? That you really liked. Ladies. Standout design choices. I like the collaboration that was necessary. Mm -hmm. And like the need to stay together because you want the bodyguard, but also the need to explore because you got to find the cave. You know, you have to do yeah. that. I don't like the tension because I don't like pandemic. So I'm like, shh, we're fine. Everyone, sh we're fine. Everyone, <laughs> shh, shh. Like when you and I were over here and then the yeah. boys were over here. And you know what? Splitting up worked for us. Just saying. I know I won. We won. I won first. We're all winners. That's true. Except for the horse. You're not going to win on technicality this time. <laughs> not this time, but next time. Maybe there won't be a next time. Oh, geez. She's getting Dang. threatening. I mean, you said you didn't expect to see age 36, and you still have a couple <laughs> hours. That's true. You have two and a half hours until then, so... <laughs> Well, technically, if you want to go with that, I've got, like, ten. Oh, okay. See? Lots of time. Yeah. Possibilities are endless here. I know. <laughs> what doesn't work? The un the consciousness thing. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the the rule the rule book in general really yeah. like is lackluster, unfortunately, uh, because there's just like again the unconsciousness like you said where yeah. when someone gets knocked out, that's like it because now the horror that killed someone well knocked them out is moving towards you so the only way to rescue that person is now blocked by the monster that's coming at you down that corridor Mm -hmm. so tough luck like the first leave them for dead yeah like we we played the game and what in two turns we lost two of our people yep to half of our party just you and me and so and immediately shannon and angie were just on their phones like okay why am i playing this now you know (laughs) Why do I yeah. need to pay attention? Like that, like player elimination in general is annoying. Yeah. And in this case where this horror like took her out because it spawned on her spot, on Shanna's spot, and then it moved into Angie's spot and took her out on the next turn. And that was it. Well, you know, like that was it for them. Played the we, first thing wrong, which is a common misconception. The whole like action horror hazard. Thing. Yeah, because the player aid cards say yeah. that you you take your turn, then the horror takes its turn, then the hazard phase, yeah. and then the next player, and like that's what the player card says, right. and so that's what we thought. Yeah. Well, and I get that it's a collaborative game, and so the idea is you should be sticking together, so that way if someone does go unconscious, you can revive them. But it takes two time things, whatever you want to call it, two actions, actions, to revive somebody, to give them one health back, which means that you're not going anywhere. Yeah. So if you're trying to flip over tiles, then that just seems kind of and, counterintuitive. Yeah. And the just only to way die. to win this game is to flip over as many tiles as you can as mm-hmm. fast as you can. Right, because that uh, that exit is out of how many tiles are there? 40? There are 64, 64 tiles. 64 tiles. And you have 22 turns. Right. And to those... Get there. Well, in a four-player game, you have 22 turns. And those there. last... That, that that exit tile is hidden within the, f- like, five or six last yeah. tiles. Yeah, you take yeah. the bottom five tiles and you mix in the exit. So it's anywhere from the 59th tile to the 64th tile. You Like, it's one of those. Yeah. I also don't understand why the horror doesn't go away, but all the other things do. You know what I mean? Oh, in between turns. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh. when you flip over the next card, because like if something's it's... down there. I think it's because you can get rid of it once you get seven spaces away. Yeah. Or you got. Damned. It stops hunting you once you get far enough away from it. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, because you're going. Oh well, I don't know. Do what don't I don't know where they me. went. Where did they go? They were my friends, and they left me. My other issue is the there's just a lot of iconography. Yeah. And uh, it's really hard to figure out what things are at the first time without having the rule book with you constantly. Yeah. Because yeah. the player aid cards, they're like four different player aid cards or something like that and they're front and they're double sided too. Yep. So where they're looking like cuz I don't really know how many of each card there are cuz I'm like, oh, there are four different cards that have your basic actions, but two cards that have the hazard actions and uh, you know I have yep. this stack of player aid cards and they're all different and I'm like how how many of these are there yeah so that was frustrating that was very frustrating anything else that didn't work again the low the like the this is not a good game to play in low light because no you just it's won't hard to see see stuff on the other side of the table um, what I find interesting is I mean I was reading the instructions online If you're going to do a single player game, if you're going to play by yourself, you have to use four people, Mm -hmm. right? And if you're going to do two to three people playing, then you all have to double up your characters. Mm -hmm. But if there's four people, then you don't double up (laughs) because I would like to see us all double up our characters because aren't there eight characters? Yeah, it's only supposed to go to six, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, two of us would play two characters or something. I'd like to see all the characters in action. Mm -hmm. Like, would that, could that help you? Like, the scout, 
you know, with mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. their special action, would that be beneficial? Yeah. I feel like my special thing, the whole explosive thing, wasn't helpful to the end when we did mm-hmm. an alternate ending. Because in the original ending, Angie and I made it out safely and you guys didn't. But I said, I could also do this. We did like a, a you guys had Clue. Like, you know, we did an alternate yeah. ending. But here's what really happened. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went back <laughs> and I almost died to save you guys. And there's that the unconscious rule yeah. that threw that whole thing off. But mm-hmm. The... Yeah. Oh, sorry. But I'm, I'm just saying, I think everyone has an ability that can be really important. Like Angie was a medic, obviously. That's mm-hmm. important. She could sprint, you know. Yeah. You, I thought yours is probably one of the most beneficial because you could Mine keep looking nice. at different cards and you could always pick up all the cave rock. Yeah. And clean Until them. I ended up with like a card that was a dead end and a, it had a horror spawn yeah. point. And I'm like, well, this is just going to be mine forever now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mentioned in a YouTube video, too. He's like, I don't think the geologist is ever going to use this card. So yeah. let's put that over here. And, of course, Dan was really helpful, like, the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Yay. I don't think that any character is, like, Shut too it. heavy and too great. You know what I mean? Like, we all had a special ability that was helpful at some point. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't helpful until near the end. Yeah. I can't ima- imagine playing this game without Dan's character. Oh, yeah. That would just, I think, be infuriating. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> we need him for the horror. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that doesn't work... There is quarterbacking in this game. Oh yeah, it happened. Tons of it. it happened tonight, uh, where Dan's just like, uh, "I'm gonna," and Chance like, "You're gonna go here." He's like, "Sure, it's whatever." <laughs> and, it's good. You know, like uh, it's going to happen. And again, we talked about this last it's week. It's a collaborative yeah. game. In, in cooperative games, it's very hard to stop quarterbacking, and this was one of those times where like there was one obvious choice of what to do. So. Everyone else kind of just made choices for other people because right. that's the correct decision. You well, know, if you're on one end of the table and your character and you can't yeah. see you what's can't on the see other what's side, there, right. yeah. then yeah, that's what you're gonna do. Quarterbacking is not always bad, as long as you don't Tom Brady it and deflate the football. Huh. Sorry, I just hate that guy. <laughs> I'm from New England. I like the Patriots. I'm so sorry for you. But I don't like Tom Brady either. It's yeah, okay. He's- a douche <laughs> favorite moments of the evening when i won <laughs> <laughs> yes and by, by like, hey. you mean you just left everybody even though you were supposed to help them because you're a medic hell yeah meanie <laughs> i found the way out i'm going see ya if you didn't follow me that was your damn problem <laughs> like so, seriously so, so. what happened to everybody stick together well you two left us yeah, because you're boys and you're dumb. I would hold you so left us because we were in the middle and you were up there near the end. You left us. You told us to because of the cave in. That's true. <laughs> you explicitly <laughs> said. Just leave me here. Yeah, we were trying to wrap back around. <laughs> we really were. Yep. But instead I just found the opening and I yep. did so it's fine. <laughs> Just trying to keep up with PJ. <laughs> I'm going this way. Well, okay. okay. Hold on. <laughs> uh, this is this. Uh, I definitely play this again. <laughs> Let's see what else we could do. I feel like it would be easier the second time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say easier, but less confusing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. There definitely is a high replayability with this. Because you still have that tension of running out of cards before you find the exit. And the tiles always change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the theme. I really do. Oh, me too. This is great. I like that you guys inadvertently made the horror Fifi. <laughs> yeah, every time we moved it. <laughs> ah, oh, crap. The cat's eating again. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> every time you got close to that. You didn't even have to get close to it. You just look at her while she's eating. <laughs> I miss Fifi now. I know. So the game is, um, I believe, like 30 some dollars on Amazon. I bought it. <laughs> I don't remember what I paid for it. <laughs> I paid something like that. I just put things in the cart and said, yep, click. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's Bless a you. Subterra 2. I forgot about that. Bless I was going to bring that up later, but yeah. Sorry, thank you. Because we're, yeah, we're getting into it right now. Oh, it's out of print. 
What, September 1? Yeah, it's $70 yeah. right now. Ooh. I got it on a secondary market. I did not buy it on Amazon, and I didn't get it for $70. I paid less than that. I want to say it was like between 50 and 60 Like It was not cheap, but I think $60 is a decent number for a game always. And I was happy with the idea of it being um, similar to Betrayal. Yeah, Game so. Nerds has it for 35 I think I bought it on Game Nerds. Yeah, I th that looks like... The only decent place, Zatu Games, has Subterra yeah. 2 for 42 Yeah, and I bought it because there's an expansion. So, I, And they, they say the expansion's good because it does make more variability to the game. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Might have to try that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Game Nerds, 35 bucks. Yeah. Uh, I It's definitely worth 35 bucks. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't pay more than that, though. Like, for yeah. that price, there are better cooperative games. Yeah. Um, well, the box is small too. Like, yeah, yeah. I think about like size and like, how much you'd pay for it. So. Mm -hmm. Gosh, now she's complaining that it has such a small package. John Garcia. Well, that's only like <laughs> <laughs> just when it comes to like components. You know, like it's definitely like a thirty-five dollar game. Yeah. Like you said, oh, yeah. it's, it's smaller game. Uh, it's you know, like there's not a lot in it in terms yeah. of components, right? It's, this yeah. isn't Frosthaven. <laughs> <laughs> Only Frosthaven is Frosthaven. <laughs> this isn't even like the little uh, little Gloomhaven from Target, you know, like Jaws Wingspan. of the Lion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like the little Gloomhaven. <laughs> and that, that one's only 40 you know? And that's, that has a way more stuff than oh, Subterra. Yeah. How much does Pandemic cost usually? 35 So I think that's comparative. That's a good yep. pro Yeah, so I would compare it to the cost say, of I, Pandemic. I, I bought the, the Legacy... Nah. That one cost me like sixty bucks. Yeah, Legacy. I've. I don't think I've ever seen it cheaper than fifty for any of the Legacy ones. But I bought that. I bought that when I was in Virginia doing my stunt show because mm -hmm. I had the money. So I was like, ooh. Yeah. I hate pandemic. Oh, I love it. It's so good. It's too, so it's too fun. stressful so for me. That's why I don't like it. So fun. I, I still have not won a game. <laughs> yeah, that's I've why always I hate come it. like this close. <laughs> I, so the uh, designer of Pandemic, he did also Forbidden Island, which is a smaller version of it. And oh I've gotten to the point in Forbidden Island where I I know like I can solve the game immediately. Like I look at the map and I'm like I know what to do to to win the game. And they say if you play Pandemic enough, you can get to that point too, where. You just look at the layout of where all the outbreaks are, where all the diseases are, and you can just be like, I know exactly what I have to do to contain this. Like, mm. you can figure, you know, there are competitions of who can solve, who can beat the game first, you know, uh, as quickly as possible. Interesting. Um, Today that was me. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Point that out again. Sorry. So that's something about the randomness of this game is you can't do no. that because no. the map is different every time exactly. and all that, yeah. which I exactly. like. Uh, maybe I'll bring over the Legacy Edition sometime and we'll do yeah. that for Pandemic. I'll um, go to bed. <laughs> so, Just, so for Subterra, um, final thoughts, what do you think? I think it's a solid co-op game. It's... Um, like, if you have other co-op games, I don't know if I'd be comfortable recommending it, though. Like, it's a good game. I I would recommend it only if this is something up your alley. If it's like, a theme you like. If Yeah, if it's a theme, if you like Betrayal, if you like those kinds of games, then, yeah, definitely take a look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like Betrayal and Pandemic, mix them together, and you get this. Yeah, I like and that. That's a fair assumption. So I feel like I'm something a little more strategic and more stressful than Betrayal. Mm -hmm. There's there's no billion different haunts. It's the same thing. Like, you're looking for a one way out, you know? Yeah. Lighter on rules, for sure. Yeah. Just get stressed with the cards, though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, what do you think? Uh, I, th I think it's, like, again, uh, if this is something that you're interested in, if you like this kind of gameplay, then yeah. I would totally recommend it. Mm. I would not recommend this to somebody who's never played a game like this before. Yeah. I would say start with something a little less stressful. So even even Betrayal is less stressful in the sense that um, the rules are a lot 
better laid out. And yeah. everything that you may have a question about in that game is right there in one of the many, <laughs> many booklets. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's all there, spelled out for you. Where this one, we had to figure it out by... Pull the YouTube video. I would say watch the YouTube twice. video. Go on to Reddit. Yeah. yeah. We, we were looking all over for like some of the questions that we needed answers well, the, to. Right, and, would... and even this one, we even had to make a house rule, which was like, if you need to make a house rule for a game... Yeah. You might want to take a look at your rules again. You may not have play tested this game enough. So right. there, the one that we watched that I pulled up, it's from Slicker Drips on YouTube. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but it's okay. called Subterra Playthrough, and I really liked the way that he laid it out. He explained everything, mm-hmm. and he shows you the cards, and he's there playing it as he's showing it. I think that's a really good video to watch because it answers most of your questions. It's a 30-minute YouTube video, but you can skip through like I did for the things you needed. Yeah, get to the parts you need. Yeah. Um, the Unconscious thing, you guys went on Reddit, and you found like a, a workaround. A house for the, rule. Yeah, yeah house, the house rule. rule. Which I thought was really nice. Um, and again, I think it saved us <laughs> Brett, I would say like if you like betrayal and you're looking for something to kind of one up and get more strategic and more more intense, I I personally would play this again. Mm-hmm. And I don't say that very often about board games with you because <laughs> your board games are really intense. Like I'll play Wingspan again, but I like fun, like lighthearted ones, you know, mm-hmm. usually. Um, this, I thought there was a little bit of tension and it was good. But as long as Dan's character was there, I felt fine. <laughs> did, would as, you say you felt safe? I did feel safe with Dan's character, <laughs> not Dan. <laughs> it wasn't for Dan. I don't know what we would do. But, I mean, I, I would definitely play it again. I'd love to see with all six characters. I wouldn't mind trying it again with, oh, can you imagine like a six-player game of this? Yeah. Ooh. We'd well, go through that stack of tiles a lot faster. Yeah, we would. Which uh, That's something like the less players you have, the harder this game gets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because... It's just so hard to get through that stack of tiles. Oh yeah, it's tough because uh, you have to decide like, do I do I want to heal myself, take up an entire turn, yeah. or do I want to explore to find a way out? Mm. Um, we were just saying the other day, that's slightly go off topic. I really want to play Libertalia with like a full mm-hmm. group, <laughs> like that would a full be so six fun. player group. Shanna would like that one. I really think she would. Oh, and, and before we get back on the right topic, I just gotta say. Those metal coins for that game are so awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's so tactile. It, it's perfect. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just hearing the clank. Yep. And it makes the box even heavier. It does. PJ's like, should I? And I go, yes, you should. <laughs> You're welcome. Especially when I saw that, like, if you buy the game, you get the metal coins at a discount. I'm like, yes. Doing well, that. Yep. <laughs> of course, the first thing I had to ask, did you go? Yeah, I got some. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the floor today. Oh. That was Scythe. Oh, Scythe. So here are my cardboard ones that I'm just keeping. I don't know why, but I'm holding on to them. Alex. Well, we're keeping on to ours, too. I was thinking of mixing them in, and then I was like, ah, the, the box won't close. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like if you have a six-player game, it might be nice to have. Oh, You'll definitely need them. Yeah. You're going to need them. That's true. Yeah. Get the loot. So that yeah. was our big issue with Libertali is there's not enough not coins. Not enough coins. No. Yeah. There's a child whistle. Bless you. Yes, yeah, so I hear. <laughs> uh, so Subterra, I I will not recommend this as your first game in this genre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you have played this genre before, do it. Yep. It was a fun game. It was a fun game. Yeah. I'll play it again. Well, we should play it again. It definitely needs like four to six plays to really like it, love it. Let's do it again. Yeah. All right. With that, everyone, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to jump in on that contest. So if you are listening to this on YouTube, uh, comment on the video or email us at gamesoverboard at gmail.com or visit us at gamesoverboard.com where you can send us a message that way or message us through Facebook. Comment on the picture. Comment on the picture that we'll get, we're going to post on Facebook once it like once we officially hit ten thousand. But you can get on it early; doesn't matter to us. Like you can just start emailing us now. Please don't make fun of me. Oh, damn. It's his birthday. I guess you don't have to this time. That's the thing is we haven't really done a whole lot for people to want to make fun of you yet. That's true. That's true. I guess we need more videos of us. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. You belong in the zoo with the monkeys and the elephants, cause they all look 
like you. See, that's the much nicer version than what I got growing up from my father, <laughs> which was happy birthday to you. You live in a zoo because you look like a monkey and you smell like one too. Yep. <laughs> My father yep. also gave great gems such as uh, if you did something stupid and he asks why you did it, and if your response started with, well, I thought, he'd say, ah, I'm going to stop you right there. When you think, you weaken the team. I got that a lot. <laughs> I, I still like, you're about as useful as the screen tour on a submarine. <laughs> that was my grandfather. <laughs> that was my grandfather to one of his students when he was substitute teaching. <laughs> All right, anyone have any anything else to say before we wrap this up? It's my bedtime. It's Sanji's bedtime. Angie, did you think of the sandwich that we named in your honor? You said a bagel sandwich, but what's going to be on the bagel sandwich? Oh, God. I don't think you could fit God on a bagel sandwich. Shut up, Dan. All right. right. We'll keep our <laughs> listeners. I feel like it needs to be a breakfast sandwich. Okay. You know, like the bacon, egg, cheese. Love it. All right. Dinner. Yeah. Bacon. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And we will talk to you next week. Talk to or at? I think we're like talking talk at, at them. them. I yes. mean, maybe. Yeah. Email us. We're lonely. Dan's lonely. I'm always lonely. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Except when I'm with you. I don't feel comfortable in my house again. <laughs> <laughs> Give us five minutes. <laughs> Then we'll really get uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, for that we don't Golly, need five minutes. Golly, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs>